So everyone has heard the theme this year, but do we really understand the importance of leaving behind a legacy? To dive deeper into the subject, we went to where it all originated. Hi, I'm Seth from CSTV News. This is Trisha Long from Yearbook. What is your exact title? Um, I'm copy editor and head of marketing. So this year's theme is legacy. Um, we heard that originated in Yearbook. Can you explain? Yep, every year we have um, to create a new theme for the next year's yearbook. And this year we really wanted it to um, incorporate everyone in every club and organization in our school. And we really thought that a good relation to everyone is legacy. Everyone leaves a legacy, whether it's good or bad. So um, everyone can start thinking about their legacy from freshman year to senior year, what they're going to leave behind, and how they want people to remember them. Okay, do you know somebody that's left a legacy in the school? Oh yeah, Miss Kim has left like a crazy legacy. She's only been here for a couple years and she came in really strong and anyone can go to her whether or not their questions relate to school or not and um, they can go to her for advice or I mean one time she gave me a ride home so she I just think that she's left a really great legacy on our school. Okay well thank you for your time. Yep no problem. Hi I'm Seth from CSTV News. I'm here with Miss Kim talking about what does legacy mean? Um, well, I think legacy to me means leaving a lasting impression. So um, leaving little bits of who you are and what your purpose was for other people to adopt and do themselves. And what do you want your legacy to be? That's a question I think a lot of people ask a lot of. Um, for myself, I think if I look at who I am and what I teach in the classroom, respecting people and being responsible and not giving up and having determination and even grit. Um, I'm hoping that those are the things that people will see and that's the legacy that I leave behind. What can students do to leave behind their legacy? I think to first think of what it is, who they are, right? So the, I guess the easiest way to say it is to think, to plan, and do. So think about who you are as a person. What is important to you? Plan out what does that look like in terms of the world and then start acting on it. And uh, who do you think has left a uh, long-lasting legacy in our community? Um, well, considering that this is only my third year in this community, um, I think the person who comes to mind, and I think that word just captures Hazel really well, um, I mean, everywhere that you go in this year, you just feel and see everything that he's done. And even um, seeing how much he's brought people together and, you know, a bigger community together for a bigger purpose of, you know, random acts of kindness and um, just giving to other and being selfless. Like, that's one huge legacy that um, he's definitely left. And it's really great and encouraging to see everybody step up and continue that legacy. Well, thank you for your time. You're welcome. So who are you and what will your legacy be? Will it be good or bad? Back to you. Hi, I'm Courtney Pyatt and today I'm sitting down with Ms. Ram to talk about NHS. What is NHS? NHS is an organization that um, is nationally recognized for students who meet some academic criteria, but then also um, it's an organization that involves some additional pieces. We are based on four pillars. Those are scholarship, leadership, character, and service. So in addition to academic achievement, um, NHS students participate in a lot of community service hours. And um, so here at Cedar Springs, we have a chapter that is made up of juniors and seniors. Um, however, this year we're excited because we're planning to add sophomores to the mix. So, um, so that's a little bit of an overview of what National Honor Society is. I'm with the advisor F FFA with Mr. Reburn here today. What is FFA? FFA is a national, the world's largest national youth organization uh, with uh, about 500,000 members. There are students that are interested in premier leadership, personal growth, and career success, and we focus on agriculture. How can students get involved in this club? Well, at Cedar Springs, uh, FFA stands for Future for America. And uh, if students are interested in becoming members, uh, we have a membership application in our room. We run all kinds of programs from Project PALS, where kids mentor uh, second graders, uh, to career events where kids go and uh, participate, compete with nationally in a forestry contest, and livestock judging contests, uh, landscaping. There's all kinds of opportunities for kids, but uh, they just come by and talk to us, get an application, fill it out, turn it in. Uh, if they really want to compete in the national events, 
they have to take an uh, ag class, an agri-science class uh, here at Cedar, but they can do local things locally. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I'm here with Sean Murphy to talk about the Thespian Society. What is Thespian Society? Thespian Society is a honor society for our theater program, and basically we try to promote our theater program to younger people or to people that just aren't aware of it in the community, and we try to also partner up with community theater. How can students get involved? Well, it's not so, it's not a club that you can just join. It, you have to do a certain amount of things. I think uh, it's three shows and then two set builds, so you have to do two different capacities of theater, and then from there you're you'd be selected, and then that's it. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks. I'm John Gritsby of CSTV News, and we're giving advice from upperclassmen to freshmen. So, Julian, what classes do you think freshmen should take throughout their high, high school experience? I think they should take more AP classes, and they should take dual enrollment classes. It's good for them if they're thinking to have a good career, like go to college and stuff. So, with schools, like extracurricular activities or work and stuff, how do you deal with that? Well, one thing is, if you have a lot of like AB classes or bigger classes that you'll have a lot of homework in, it may not be the best to do after school activities. But if you do, it is essential that you do those extra activities and then get your school work done afterwards. I would say to pick friends that you think will stay for a long time. And if they don't, don't be discouraged because friends will come and go, but you know, the good ones will stick. What advice do you have to freshmen? Um, stay on the right side of the hallway and don't stand in the middle because the seniors and upperclassmen will get mad at you. So Katie, what advice do you have to freshmen? I would absolutely say that they should not let any upperclassmen intimidate them because we're actually very nice and we will help you if you get lost, if you get scared, no matter what, we'll be there for you. Alright, thank you Katie. So Mr. Capulco, what advice do you have to the freshmen this year? My advice to the freshmen would be keep your heads down, your mouth shut, and you just might get through this. Thank you. So what advice do you have to the freshmen? To walk on the right side of the hallway. Anything else? <laughs> it's for us, uh, and I believe that you should just go out there and have fun. Even though you're stressed and you're going to have a big workload, you're just going to have to make fun of it and go throughout the steps and you'll get it, I promise. I'm John Grigsby with CSTV News, and my advice to you is take a real shower, not in cologne, and the right is polite, and if you guys need anything, just talk, ask, we can help. It's not terrible, we're not mean. Thank you, and goodbye. Hi, I'm Jessica Ryder, and I'm with CSTV News and we'll be interviewing some of the new teachers. Let's take a look. Hi, my name is Mrs. Teske. This is my first year at the high school. I am teaching resource room. Hi, my name is Mrs. Hall, and I teach in the my side classroom. Um, I teach chemistry A right now. If you have me in the spring, it'll switch over to B. I've got a CSHS singers and CSHS concert choir. Hi, I'm Randy Batch, and I am the digital teacher mentor here at Cedar Springs High School. Uh, hi, I am Miss DeBerti. I am the new Spanish teacher in Cedar Springs. Last two years I was teaching at Cedar View Elementary with the fourth grade students and currently I'm teaching the high school MySci program. Apocalypse, what would your weapon of choice be? Oh, I, it would definitely be a hairbrush. A mad axe, so I would use that <laughs> on the zombies to keep them at bay. So I definitely have to take the Batmobile because it's so versatile and it has the uh, gun power. What would your weirdest pick Dill pickles and saltines. Would probably have to be meatloaf. Morel mushrooms are my favorite foods. My weirdest craving food would have to be for breakfast to have toasted PB and J. What would be your profession if you weren't a teacher? I was not a teacher. I would probably be a baker. 
I can't even imagine. I've wanted to be a teacher since I was young, so I don't know. I want to be a national park ranger. That's just the hat man that just completes <laughs> the whole you. thing. <laughs> What is your favorite sport? Volleyball. And I'm actually coaching 7th grade volleyball right now. To watch would be f hockey. It would be football. Baseball, basketball, and football. Favorite sport is golf. I play, in fact, for the league championship Thursday night. My favorite sport, I'd have to say, is football. My favorite sport is definitely basketball. What is your biggest pet peeve? My biggest pet peeve is people that lie. When people crack their gum. My wife cracks her gum all the time and it drives me nuts. The biggest one out of school is tailgating. Like the sound of scratching cardboard. And it drives me crazy when you have your hand out ready for the money and they set it down on the counter right next to your hand. <laughs> drives me crazy. <laughs> Hello sports fans, my name is Caden Myers here with CSTV Sports. To kick off the fall sports, let's send it over to Sydney Dreyer with our latest football update. In the season opener, the Red Hawks were victorious over the Comstock Park Panthers 50-13. Despite losing a number of starting seniors last year, the team is still going strong. Going into Game 2 at Sparta, they were once again victorious over the rival Spartans 44-6. The boys will travel to play Grand Rapids Catholic Central next Friday, September 19th. The student section theme will be a tie-dye hippie out. Be sure to bring $5 for the Spirit Bus. This has been Sydney Dreyer, CSTV News. Now back to Caden Myers. Thank you, Sydney. In other sports news, girls varsity volleyball team had a quad last week Tuesday at Grand Haven. They faced some of the top ranked teams in the state. Unfortunately, they were not successful. However, the girls are making many improvements and we look forward to their home opener Tuesday, September 23rd at 6 against Wyoming Park. Boys varsity soccer has played eight games. Last Monday, the Hawks played at Sparta. They were victorious over the Spartans 4-0. Great job, guys. Be sure to come out and support our boys as they take on Forces Northern on the 23rd at Red Hawk Stadium. This has been Caden Myers with your sports update. Now back to you guys.